Hi, it's Hans Lewis Klimt here. It's um, Monday. It's the 12th of April 2010 and uh, spring has come to Norway. We're sitting outside here on a glorious and sunny day. I'll even show you how you know you can see the fjord, the Oslo fjord down there between the trees. The leaves haven't come up quite yet but they're about to come but as you can see it's a clear blue sky. There's not a cloud on the horizon and it's great to be outside in Oslo on a day like this. Um, I'm going to do some market comments and I haven't done much market comments through the winter really since uh, March and, and spring early uh, last year I haven't really done a lot of comments and that's because uh, you know the um, government's effort to prop up the economy by borrowing money and risking basically their entire balance sheet on the recovery, the Keynesian recovery, the fake recovery that they to some extent have accomplished is really something, it disgusts me, you know, it's, they are, they're, they're risking, you know, the entire capital of the nation, they're risking bankrupting themselves in order to bail out the current system, the current elite, the current people who have assets, the current people who have money, the rich people today. They're bailing them out just in order to keep the system intact, to keep the power structure intact. I would have much rather liked to see that things would have fallen apart last year and in 2008 and that we would have had a new system built on the rubble where it would have been a metocracy where people with hard-working people doing creative stuff, working out in the economy, producing stuff, would have risen to the occasion and would have risen through the ranks. Instead what they've done is that they've risked the entire balance sheet and, and the, all the money of the nation to bail out basically the financial elite, the people that have gone rich, gotten rich by riding the inflationary wave since the Second World War and all the way up to, well, basically 2007 when it started crashing. And um, the people who are rich today are people who have ridden that wave. You know, some people have produced stuff and, and sort of pushed the uh, boundary of, uh, of the rich society forward, but most of the people who have gotten rich have gotten rich by riding the wave, getting early the new money that's the, that the inflationary policies of, of the governments and the central banks have produced. I mean, the people that have gotten really rich are the people in the financial industry and people close to the stock market, people close to the banks who've been able to borrow money and all that. I mean, how different is that from, say, in, in the late 19th century, in the 1800s, the people who got rich back then were people who actually, actually produced stuff, you know, it wasn't riding a, a financial wave, it was producing like Standard Oil or, or, or whatever, the Vanderbilts or, or whatever, they, they, the, the people who made the car factories and it was all based on production and actually producing stuff. Today and for our generation since the Second World War it's been based on riding the inflationary wave, uh, you know, going public on the stock market, selling some stocks, borrowing money to buy real estate, and real estate's been going up still. But this has turned. I mean, I don't think people fully realize the seriousness of this, the, the, the turn that came in 2007, 2008, and what we're just starting, the, the epoch that we've just started into right now, because the inflationary wave has been broken. We've been riding this wave for two generations, and now it's broken. We, we don't really know what the new direction is, but it's not going to look like the last 50, 60 years since the Second World War ended. We're not going to have a new inflationary wave of the same magnitude where things will be perfectly all right, and people will just ride the wave into prosperity and, and create these illusionary uh, fortunes of, of financial assets that aren't really based on anything real, but just numbers in a bank and in, in, in paper. It's not going to happen again, so it will be different. And I've been spending a lot of time during this winter to think about what that's going to be like and, and what, basically, going forward one or two generations, what, 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 what it will look like. And there, there are many different scenarios, potential scenarios, and of course, you know, as Mises described as early as 1912, uh, what can happen when you have, if, if you have governments trying to prop it up further, 
is a is a crack up boom and you can look up that on on wikipedia or or whatever and and to see what a crack up boom is but a crack up boom is really a um a phase of inflationary policy at the very end where it uh, gets out of control and where people just scramble to get rid of money and and the government pumps in more money and you have inflation going off the roof and and the kind of things that happen to the economy then and also the, the social structure we're not quite there yet it, in some sense we are but it, it's not if you look at the balance sheet of the Fed in the US it's uh, it's doubled and that really is you know could be the start of a crack up boom but then again you don't see it out in the general price level and, and you don't really see it um, being distributed out so I don't think we're at the crack up boom quite yet but it, it could we could get there and the thing is that I'm not sure where we're going right now and neither is anyone else because we have the central banks trying to keep inflation at their inflation targets basically two to two point five percent you have the government's uh, spending going out of control lending money out of control but what you have right now is an intermediary phase where the prices of goods are still not skyrocketing because you have a deflationary force brought on by the financial crisis so so what we can we'll see now is for some time the deflationary force will be prevailing and it is right now in the US in in um, Europe and in Japan it's been for quite some time so the the deflationary forces are still prevailing allowing the governments to print more money to bail themselves out and to bail out the financial industry and no one's really sure how long this sort of intermediary phase will last until the deflationary forces uh, stabilize and you have inflation driving the economy instead. And that will happen. You know, it's, you, you will have an, uh, a flattening of that curve. And this will happen within years. We're not talking decades uh, for, for this to happen because the adjustment in the economy is already going on and bankruptcies are going on and people are getting fired and and people are looking for new homes and moving on and the, the, the whole system takes time but you know within a couple of three or four or five years you, you basically have washed out most of this and you have a new turn in the economy and then you'll have, see inflation and interest rates are going to follow up on that and, and we won't see these low interest rates for you know a prolonged time beyond the intermediary phase so within 10 years the, you know the inter natural interest rate should be five six seven eight nine percent something like that and it will happen and uh, that's going to kill asset prices you know asset prices are, are today propped up by the low interest rates so everything's going to change and it'll be an ex extremely exciting journey to be on what will happen in the stock market in the short term i don't know I, I've been amazed by you know the, the markets basically doubling from from the uh, bottom, and I didn't see that happening, and I didn't think it would happen. So congratulate to you, to you anyone who's been riding that wave. Sure, hallelujah. Uh, me myself, I advised everyone to be in gold, and gold's had a good ride too. I mean, we've basically added 20 or 30 percent since I uh, I recommended it and I've been sitting very comfortably in gold now it's trading at 1160 something and uh, I mean just just imagine the kind of risk that people are taking by uh, you know riding the wave that's been for the last 12 months compared to the kind of risk I've been taking and others have been taking sitting in gold I mean it's it's not comparable at all I have known all along that I've secured my assets that I've gone into an asset class that other people will like to own more and more as the the, the, the structure of the economy collapses so I've been so comfortable making 20 or 30 percent and I mean some people have been making 100 percent but they haven't really sort of fully understood what's going on so you know I I would advise to stay out of the stock market it's it's ready for a new crash and and it can happen any day gold buy gold when you can so stay in gold diversified cash and stay away from the stock market I'll do a lot more comments coming up it's it's spring now and sunshine so I got the energy to to continue this project and and you'll see a lot more on uh, farmman TV thanks